coming even through COVID, I had a chance to probably experience some of that because we had the social distancing, but many of them still were not adhering to some of the safety concerns that came out of, of COVID. Other impacts of COVID-19, if you go into the next slide, new policies and protocols also change the face of of internment in Jamaica, new regulations and so on, financial strain. Um, and coming out of that, the industry realized that the way we approach the service had to change because it's no longer people gathering around a grave. Remember COVID? It's now people watching remotely. And so the type of grieving that went with death actually took on a different case. You're not able to see the person anymore and, and, and go up to a casket and look at them and so on. You're watching it through a screen. And so that also impacted. Now in terms of current offerings for that sector, the Montego Bay Community College has an associate degree in funeral services and the National Funeral Directors and Morticians Association also offer that kind of service. So what we did as a team, we looked at what is currently offered, and we're going to see on the next slide some of the gaps that we found. So if we go to the next slide, they don't offer skills training, particularly to the digging operation. So it starts at the health morticians and all the cremations and so on, but it didn't really speak to the persons who actually give the graves. And so they, 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 they also need to have the need for CTE to come in and um, assist with building out a program that will look at how we prepare these people for the world of, 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 of work in a different way. And so we have to rethink, and I heard Dr. Tinshi Ingram talking about it this morning, rethinking human development. And I, I contextualize it in the internment operation. So when you're just looking at the digging of a grave, we're also looking at things like the, the cultural competence, because there are different types of people. Um, I lost my mom in June last year, and she, we were at Memorist, and the grave diggers were there, and I didn't know that there was a little thing that go on. So they come and they asked for $500. Then they went and asked my husband for $500. And my husband said, but did I just give the guy $500? Yeah. So, there's a, so in terms of the cultural, they don't know how to operate with different types of people in different types of contexts. And so with this program, we ensure that internal operators will be equipped to meet the needs of their clients and the community in a changing landscape. This is all we started to think about how we can close the gap. So of course, bread giving would fall under the purview of the people who operate in different cemeteries. And so cemetery management was we had to look at it in a different way. So we were we were saying that the program should include things like grave digging, site preparation, burial fault installation, handling heavy equipment, machinery, and safety protocols. And funny enough, these were things that sometimes we just take for granted. That the people who are doing it already had these skills. Yes, then you want to maybe practice and so on, but you want to look at it from a different perspective. So our grave digging training as part of a comprehensive cemetery management program was the aim was to address gaps in sustainable practices, technology adoption, safety protocols, improve communication, customer service. So those are the areas that we focused on. So we looked at sustainability, how can we incorporate environmentally conscious practices? How do we reduce waste, composting, um, natural burial practices? We also looked at the technology. How can we use GPS? How can we use GPS in terms of precise measurements of, of walls and so on? Heavy equipment for digging and filling the graves, software management and so on. Safety training. And I must thank my executive chairman. I didn't know that there was a particular technique to digging. Did you guys know? That digging actually had a particular technique. I didn't know that. Um, evacuation equipment operations, and of course, protective equipment. So in our program, we found, and I'm glad
that all of the presenters have been speaking about it so far. The importance of soft skills training. The importance of soft skills. So grave digging operations require employees with strong soft skills because this is a time of extreme grief for the people who they're going to be interacting with. And so their communication skills. So when, I, when, when, when we went to the grave site for my mom in last June, oh, the lady that, oh, the lady that, the lady that, no, man, give up, give up, right here, give up, give up. So the communication skills, problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, and of course, these can be developed through our program. Continuing education. So grave digging operations should be supported using continuing education and training for its employees for them to stay up to date with the industry trends. And so this is where I am really, 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 really grateful to Heart Trust, NT, NCTV, for taking on, believing in this program, and designing the standards. So um, we have what is called the NVQJ Level 2 in terms of operations. So in this program, it allows recognition of job currently be, um, being performed to be recognized by the industry. Um, also is decision makers in formalizing the whole practice of sedentary operation. And these are just the qualification description. It doesn't require any five CXCs and K and so on. Um, the persons will be the necessary skills to prepare, dig and backfill graves, carry out ground and garden care, that kind of stuff. But they will also be guided by re relevant um, regulations that we have. So they learn about the building code, um, learn about the different sector regulatory agencies, health, parish council act, NEPA, all of those things are covered in the program. So after they have successfully completed the program, they will be awarded a certificate. And we know that our certificate is renewed around the Caribbean. So these are the clusters of courses that are done, maintain grounds and structures, garden and landscape, they grade manually and move machines, construct and finish vaults, operate and maintain vehicle and equipment, develop digital literacy skills, um, basic professional and business skills that learn about um, in, emotional intelligence, that kind of stuff, communicate effectively and efficiently in the workplace, and of course, we have an elective, develop personal life skills in the workplace. So the total credits for this particular program would be 89. So in closing, great living services contribute to the economy by creating jobs, impacting land use, supporting communities, serving as a tourist attraction, and of course, it will generate revenue for local economies. So rethinking the development of human capital in grave digging operation would include um, adopting the, the, the technology, emphasizing safety, and of course, enhancing soft skills. And finally, grave digging training as part of a comprehensive sanitary management training program could aid in addressing the gaps in sustainable practices, technology adoption, safety protocol, and of course, improved communication and customer service. So thank you very much. Um, I hope it wasn't morbid for some of you, but um, we're talking about future um, employment for a large group of people who may not have had certification before. And I hope that you knowing this will be able to invite other persons to be a part of our program. Thank you so very much.